At this point, we've looked at plenty of D versus T graphs and have the general idea on how to interpret D versus T graphs. In this tutorial, we'll do a quick review and then introduce acceleration into our D versus T graphs. First, the review. If we see a horizontal line like this, what does it tell us about the velocity of the object being described? Well, since the slope on a D versus T graph shows speed, as we know, the slope being zero like this means that the speed is zero. There is no change in distance over this time, and therefore no velocity. But what about acceleration? Well, since acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, if the velocity doesn't change, it's always zero, well, then there's no acceleration. In this case, the velocity is zero for our entire interval. And most importantly, the velocity stays at zero. No change is involved, and therefore, no acceleration. What about this d versus t graph? What do we know about the velocity in this case? Well, since there is slope now, we know that there is velocity. Since it's a positive slope going up to the right, we know that it represents a positive velocity. So what about the acceleration in this case? In this case, we do have velocity, but again, the velocity doesn't change. That is, it's a straight line. The slope stays the same. With a straight line, you can always measure the slope anywhere, and it'll be the same, right? And if it's always the same, then there can't be acceleration. So it doesn't matter if it's this slope, or the zero slope from the previous example, or even a steeper slope, if it's linear, that is, the slope doesn't change, then there is no acceleration. So, what does a D versus T graph look like when there is acceleration? Well, if there's acceleration, there's a change in velocity, which means the slope must change which means it can't be linear. Let's consider a situation where a car is starting from a stoplight, it's sitting there, and then it turns green, and it's going the speed limit after 10 seconds. What happens in between? Well, acceleration is what happens. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, so if there's a change in velocity involved, there must be acceleration. Let's analyze this. The car is sitting there at the light, then your foot comes off the brake, and you start moving ahead and you're pressing on the gas, and the slope gets a little bit bigger as your velocity increases until you're totally up to speed. And this process is our acceleration. Now, if you are given a curve like this, you might look at it and see that, well, it's certainly not linear, and therefore, there must be acceleration. Now, how could you figure out an instantaneous velocity at some point on this graph? In other words, if you wanted to know the velocity at a particular point on your way to the high speed, it's not quite as simple as a linear graph, because the slope isn't the same everywhere. To figure out the slope at a particular point on a curve like this, we use tangent lines. Let me show you. At the beginning, the tangent line would just be flat like this, showing no velocity as we sit at the light. Now here we have to be more careful, and the tangent line only touches one point on the graph, the point that we're interested in, representing its slope. And then we just take the slope of the actual tangent line. And up here at this end, the tangent line would be here. Let me just point out that tangent lines are your introduction to calculus. You already have a head start on a major concept in calculus, that is determining the slope of a curve like this using the idea of tangent lines. Let's just take one more moment to consider what happens when the car comes to another stoplight or has to slow down. At the beginning, 
The car is going at a good speed, shown by this slope. It slows down a little, and then a little bit more, and then it's finally coming to a nice stop. Slope is zero, velocity is zero. Again, we can analyze this with tangent lines. We can see the speed coming in, and let's pick a point in between here on the curve. And then if we wanted the instantaneous velocity at this point, we could just figure it out with the slope of the tangent line again. And our final tangent line would be horizontal, showing that it came to a stop. Now its velocity is zero. In this tutorial, we related our knowledge that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity to our d versus t graphs. Knowing that velocity is represented by slope, we determined three things. That linear d versus t graphs show no change in slope and thus no acceleration. Number two, acceleration is seen on a d versus t graph as a change in slope and therefore we see a curve. And when we have a change in slope, we can determine the instantaneous velocity at any point using tangent lines.